are just a few seconds away from our ringer. Once again, Sydney Witter on the left-hand side for the Sharks, Alex Hollings for the Aces. Locked and loaded and ready to go. Three seconds. Off they go. Big steps by both, neck and neck. Oh, this is going to come really down close. to a photo finish. Ooh. Holy smokes. Who could even tell who won that? That's going to have to go back to that finish line camera, Joe. 100%. I could not tell you from here. I don't think anybody could tell you without looking at an official camera to see whose feet crossed into that finish first. It's going to be millisecond. To seven, three points separating these two teams, and we have four races to go. Up next, the ringer point. Like we talked about on your screen, that's Emmy Guetta looking ready as ever for her five clusters at 135. There's Marcus Washington ready to rock. Also, five clusters at 205 pounds. Who can get to the bar first and who can cycle the bar the quickest without any issues? We're about to find out and we are about 15, 20 seconds from our ringer point. This is definitely going to be a fun one. Both of them have done it before. Yeah, it's usually something like uh, a silly mistake. Like we know they both can sprint down. They're both gonna get to the bar roughly about the same time. Right. But who can cycle? Emmy Guetta, shorter. Shorter range of motion. Does that help? I mean, you do have to go from the ground cluster overhead. So technically speaking, it should be a little faster for her. That's right. But it all comes down to the way, uh, the technicality of you. Once again, as you said, like the way you grab it, all those things. Yeah, a lot of people tend to pick those clusters up all the way up in a power clean go down. But let's see how these two uh, players do it. And off they go. Marcus Washington on your left. Emmy Guetta on the right. Washington first to touch the bar. Guetta. Closing the gap, though. Marcus Washington half a rep ahead of Emmy Guerra here. One rep remaining for Washington. Oh, and it looks like Marcus Washington is going to take... That one, Emmy Guerra just half a second behind, but she did finish within 20 seconds. That's and right. the rule for the ringer point is that if you finish within 20% of their time, then you do get that one participation point. That's right, so Palms take the ringer. The Lions unofficially will also get one point. That should bring Angelina is quoted as saying, the Wild better be ready for what's coming because I didn't come to play games. And here we go. And they're off. 80 feet. They have to go. 10 pounds for the men, six for the ladies. It looks like there is a slight edge right now. The Wild, maybe three or four feet separating the two. And it looks like, oh. No, Angelina's lost Angelina that ball. And That's McKellar right. crosses into the finish line, completing this ringer. Yeah, the Wild will take the ringer point, and I can go ahead and tell you almost uh, for a fact that the Venom will not receive any points. Now, must, uh, the second place person must finish within 20% time frame of that total time. So we're gonna see how that works out. Any mistake can, can cost these teams here. So Coleman Simpson at the line, ready to go. Coleman looking very, very yep. in it, ready oh, yeah. to go. Looks like the referees are making sure that the players are clear of their standards for the elements. Now they can start their hands walk. They can literally jump out as far as they want and land on their hands. So if they can get four or five feet, you can see Coleman's got her hands out there reaching. She's going to go two or three feet before she even gins, uh, ends up on her hands. I don't see Jasmine Simpson doing the same. 
referees ready. Layer ready. All right. Here we go. Split screen. Going to be quick. And that's oh, it. Simpson man. came out quick. She didn't get that hot, but she's moving. Coleman right on her, though. About a foot or so separating the two. It's going to be a clean and jerk and sprint. Oh, Simpson, Simpson missed, missed it. That clean. And that's going to do it. And Jesse Coleman's going to take it. Jasmine Simpson's not going to finish within 20% of that time. So no unofficially, I don't believe that she's going to be getting any credit for this ringer point. As I said earlier, Jesse Coleman is a powerhouse. This is her ringer point. Their legs. For the breakers, it's going to be Bethany Jackson, number 17. And for the brigade, it's going to be Chris Chaffee, double O. That's Those. right, 80 feet across the grid, all four quadrants as quickly as possible. If the ball comes down, you must go back to the beginning of that quadrant that you're in. That's right, female weight for this med ball is going to be six pounds. Meanwhile, it's going to be 10 pounds for the men. It's just about whoever gets across that finish line first. Yeah, this is a super, it's already hard enough to walk on your hands, but squeezing that ball between your legs, you can see they're both heavily chalked up. Chaffee a little bit more than Jackson, but I saw them in there practicing earlier and they were having trouble just because of the moisture, probably sweat, whatever it might be, with holding those balls there. So in any event, we are 10 seconds away from our first ringer point. Med ball handstand walks. Bethany Jackson on your right. Chris Chaffee on your left. And off they go. Little pause from Jackson there, but it looks like she's having no problem. They are just about neck and neck. Maybe Chaffee just a little bit ahead. Yep, Chaffee edged her out just a bit, but looks like he's losing it. Oh. Chaffee's gonna take that ringer point. One thing about the brigade, they do not play about their body weight movements. They are both incredibly skilled teams, but the brigade has always had that edge with their Once again, for the brigade, on the left side of your screen, Jocelyn Williams. On the right side, Joshua Newell. 205 pounds per hand for Joshua. 140 for Jocelyn. And we are about 10 seconds out. Both players standing, ready to go. You can see the scoreboard on the right side of your screen. Once again, unofficial, 11 to six. Both of these rookies being, both of these players being rookies, everybody just making sure that they have enough space to run through the grid in case they need to because of the momentum. It's not safe to just automatically put down those farmer carry barbells. And while we're waiting, how about a shout out to Peachy Athletics providing all the shorts that you see on all those players. Olipop is the official soda sponsor of the UGL. It's soda with minimal sugar, nine grams of fiber, and prebiotics for digestion. So be sure to check out Olipop. And now we are ready to rock and roll. Brigade and breakers, ringer number two, farmer carry, don't move a muscle. Here we go. Both players are off. And as you can see on the right, that, that little bit of front weight, like I was talking, although he's able to control it, it's going to be an easy, easy win for the breakers. Now with back to back races. They lost five in a row. Then take the ladder. They take the away ringer. Once again, was chosen. For the ladies, 10 for the men. But we have two men out there for these teams. For the Palms, it is Sebastian Alvarez. And for the Lions, Eric Cardona. Cardona, an ex he's been with the Lions from the get-go, I believe. And he's been in the league for many years. Yeah, he was actually in the National Pro Grid League um, before the Florida Grid League started, and he's been part of our league for over five years and has helped lead them to three championships. That's right. All right, 10 seconds away. This is going to be a quick one. Don't leave your seat. Referees ready. Player ready. <gasps> Little slip up from Cardona there. All right, 
Eric Cardona known for his gymnastics. We expect him to take this thing handily. I don't think there's anybody on the palms who can really keep up with him on his hands, and right now he is proving that. That's right, Coach Jamie. Asking for applause from the fans as Cardona finishes through that finish line. He's going to win. <laughs> he's showing off. He's going to win that ringer point for the Lions. That's right, and he uh, he is one of the few players in the league that is a masterful with his gymnastics in addition to being able to clean and squat. That is a toe to bar, chest to bar, into bar muscle up. And this is going to be quick, so don't you move. And off they go. A little half step there by RJ Hibbert, but he was able to stay behind the line. Alex Al Alvarez on the bar first. We're going to see who's going to complete that first. Both with four reps remaining. Both are very efficient gymnasts, so it's going to come down to a sprint. Alex Alvarez just milliseconds ahead of RJ Hibbert here. It's going to come down to that run, and Alex Alvarez is going to take this ringer point. That's right, and RJ Hibbert was just a second or two behind. So, that being said, they will the Wild will still receive a point to keep that gap a little wider, but the Venom adding two to their score. Closing the gap a little bit. That's right. Yeah. RJ Hubbard's definitely going to get a point for that.